morning everyone Candace Marie here today is an exciting day today is embryo day so we are gonna see how many of our little troopers have made it to blastocyst this is very cool very exciting am I nervous I think most people would be there's probably a little bit brewing underneath the surface maybe I'm just being tough and I don't want to admit it I'll tell you later on today but as of right now I'm just feeling excitement and I'm ready to go so come with me let's see what happens hey guys okay so I'm back I've actually been back for quite a while from the uh, clinic but I got pretty busy with work today um, and then I was ending up catching up on phone calls after work and now it's dark I wanted to take you someplace fun and pretty to have this conversation but instead we are here on the couch um, so let's chat and I have the official results. So we'll talk about those a little bit more too. Um, so went to my appointment, um, and in case you're wondering before we get started and you get distracted, in case you notice something a little weird, what's going on there? Uh, I had a minor procedure on my ear today. So ladies, well, and I guess men, if you're really into jewelry, um, I like to wear heavy earrings and it's not so great for your ears. So I had my earlobe start to tear a little bit. Um, so I went and had that repaired today. So that's all stitched up and it's gonna be healing. So in case you notice that one in this blog or any future ones and you're like, why are you only wearing one earring like a pirate? That would be why. <laughs> and of course I'm still gonna wear them. So anyway, um, so I did that first. And then after that, um, I went to Live Fertility Clinic and I saw the embryologist and I saw the rest of my medical team. Um, so Dr. Velez and Dr. Stetson, who are the primaries in charge of everything that's going on and doing the medical oversight and the procedures and all that. Um, so met with them and we went over the state of the embryos. So I know we talked the other day about that and I believe our last update where I left you off was that we had six good embryos and three suboptimal. And suboptimal doesn't mean you're out of the game, but um, they're just not as great as the good ones, right? So they're kind of B-string, if you will, or second string, uh, whatever terminology works for you. So that's where we were at. And then we had day four, which was no update. So we weren't really sure what was going on. And I believe that's actually the day that we last chatted. So today is day five. Um, and again, to recap, when you fertilize everything, that's considered day zero. Um, so now we're on day five today. So we went in and out of the six good embryos and the three suboptimal, which we were allowing to still continue um, to grow and see if they caught up, because sometimes they can do that. Um, we ended up, drum roll, um, with, you ready? Three. So we got three good embryos. And when I say good, they're great embryos. So there's a grading system. The grading system is always gonna be, you know, embryologist dependent, clinic dependent, all those kinds of things. But in our case, according to our clinic, our embryologist, their grading system luckily rated all three of our embryos that made it to blastocyst stage um, as AA embryos. And that is kind of the top of the top because you, you have A through D in two different categories. So you can have an AA, an AB, or maybe even a BA or something like that. So luckily for us, uh, the three that did progress all the way to blastocyst, so they continue to grow and look great all the way to day five, um, were all AA grade embryos. So um, because of the rest of the embryos, so the other three that were considered good the other day and the three that were suboptimal, um, unfortunately they arrested um, or in layman's terms, they just stopped growing. Um, so in that case, then they are discarded because they're no longer in their life cycle. Um, so uh, those are no more. Um, and we have three good ones. So I chatted with some friends of mine today, um, chatted with some family, and of course everybody's, how are you feeling? You know, even my husband, how are you doing with it? Um, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed. It's, I'm disappointed, it's a bummer. Um, I would have loved to have six. I was very hopeful that we were gonna have six great embryos. Um, but at the end of the day, what do I keep telling you? Stay positive, right? Um, so what's the positive? We have three. 
um, we could have been in a situation where we had zero and sadly some people do find themselves in that situation um, so we have three and not only do we have three but we have three really great quality embryos so for that I'm very thankful uh, my husband as well we feel very very blessed um, I think the biggest disappointment for myself is we kind of had a plan so we were you know trying to be very optimistic and say okay we're gonna have six so in our minds if we would have had six we are um, planning to um, transfer two at a time um, and sometimes the well I can't, shouldn't say sometimes but the statistics are such that your first implantation is um, frequently not as successful as a subsequent transfer um, so when you think about it that way we were considering if we had six we had an opportunity for a transfer of two if that didn't work then we would have a transfer for another two and then we would have a backup of a last set of two and if we didn't need all of them then our plan was going to be eventually in you know two to three years uh, we would go ahead and release the remaining embryos um, for embryo adoption and that's something that is completely independent for every single person, every single couple on what you want to do with remaining embryos. But it was very clear to us on what we wanted to do um, because I, I just couldn't bear the thought of being in a situation where I couldn't produce my own eggs and we couldn't produce our own um, embryos. Um, and if we had found ourselves in that situation, we would be so incredibly thankful for anyone else that would be selfless, selfless enough to um, to offer their embryos up for adoption. So while we weren't in that situation, we wanted to proactively be those people that we would hope would be out there for us if we needed it. So I think that's kind of the biggest disappointment for me is we were looking forward to gifting somebody with that and we're not able to do that right now. Um, so that was a bummer. But again, we're gonna stay positive three in embryos to work with. Um, so that's very cool. Um, and let me take a look at the notes that we have here, just so I can make sure that I'm giving you all the right details of what was going on here. Especially when they're giving you information when you're coming out of AMSD, you might tweak a detail here or there. So I wanna make sure I give you the right thing. Um, so their, their embryologist report, their rundown um, of the facts of everything that we had is that we had during the second stimulation and retrieval, which again, we just did six days ago, five days ago. Yeah, six days ago. Um, we retrieved six eggs total. I think previously I told you five, but I think it was because five were viable. So they got a total of six eggs out on the second retrieval that would be considered fresh on that particular day. And then they thawed um, the six good eggs from the initial um, egg retrieval which had been frozen at that time of retrieval. So then we were working with a total of 12 um, on this past, um, past retrieval day. And then we were able to do the fertilization. So a fertilized 12, one did not fertilize at all. Um, so that was a bummer. And then let's see, they did, five of the mature eggs via ICSI. So that's when they intentionally place one sperm into one egg. And they told me today, but I can't remember if that was the fresh or the frozen. I think it was the frozen that they did that with. Um, and then, yeah, that must've been it. And then the six um, fresh were treated by conventional IVF. I'm not sure what the difference is. So, I might have to look that up. Maybe I'll put a link down below if I see what there's a simple definition for that. Um, and so then we had da, 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 go on to day two and they their evaluation was that they had seven embryos that were good quality and two embryos with the suboptimal on day two. And then on day three, that's where we had the six embryos with good quality and the three embryos with suboptimal. Um, and day four, they left everything in what they call the extended culture, you know, the, the material or the fluid that they have in, in the little dish. So you have one embryo per dish. So whatever that mixture is, they were just continuing to let them do what they were going to do. Um, 
and see if anything caught up. And then day five today, when they did their um, their evaluation, they had the three embryos with good quality, and then six of them had arrested. So it wasn't a quality issue at that point. It's just they had stopped. They had ceased. Um, so there was no decision to be made there. Um, I did ask them um, previously that if there was a question of quality, that we be consulted first um, before we made any decisions about discarding them um, or what have you. But in this case, it didn't come down to quality. It's just they were no longer progressing at all. So somewhere, somewhere in day four, the evening of um, between day four and day five, they stopped. So there was no decision to be made there. So we have a total of three grade AA embryos. Um, two of which have been frozen together um, in the same containment unit, and then the third is a singleton that has been frozen on its own. So our plan is to implant the two that are frozen together um, in the next two to three months, something like that, um, and then we have the backup. So if for some reason that doesn't take, then we can go ahead and, and use the third and try again. Um, and hopefully what we're hoping for is that the two take, um, you know, at least one of the two, but hopefully best case scenario will take. Um, we have two healthy babies and then, you know, a year and a half later, two years later, then we can go ahead and try for the third. So that would be kind of our tentative plan right now. Um, to stay on the journey and see if that how if that's how it works out because there's always twists and turns and as they say as soon as you make a plan somebody else has a different idea so we'll see how that goes um but that's where we're at today um a couple other side note you know things that i'd like to mention is literally before i started filming this vlog i had um i guess the best way you could you would explain it would be a friend of a friend um who i've met at several social occasions through a mutual friend. Um, we've been chatting um, on private messenger and um, she is also gonna be potentially going through IVF and so we started chatting. Um, and that's becoming more regular. And so I'm really glad that I can be a resource for her. And that's one thing that I have noticed is I've joined a couple of groups on Facebook um, and one is an unofficial one of the clinic and you really find a sense of community there. People are able to chat, you can ask questions, people understand what you're talking about terminology wise and what the process is. Um, so that's really nice just to, just to have somebody to talk to that understands. Um, and your friends and family mean very, very good by you know listening to you and talking about the whole thing, but they just may not understand. So um, it's good to have somebody that has that frame of reference that you can go to. Um, one of the other groups that I joined that I've really found the same, and I think surprised me even more so, um, but definitely in a positive way, is um, there is an app and there is a book called Gentle Birth. Um, written by a really renowned um, doula. Um, and so Tracy Donegan, she's great. Uh, I listen to her app and it's, it's all about mindfulness and de-stressing and all these kinds of things. So I listen to that almost every single night, um, which has been awesome. Um, it has a lot of things for preconception, etc. cetera. So, um, but they also have a private Facebook group that I have joined. And I don't know these women from Adam, um, but I've posted in there a couple of times and I mean, numerous, numerous comments, well wishes. I've had people private message me from there. They're like, hey, I've been there. Do you want to talk? And these women are global. They're from many different countries. And it's, I just think it's such a blessing to one, have the sense of community, no matter where you are, what the topic is, anything like that, to just have people come together and be there for one another. But especially for women, um, I think it's really great because all too often I find a little bit of a sidebar, but women compete with each other. Um, and that's very sad. Um, so in this case, I've really found a lot of women that are there to talk, to listen, and to really lift each other up. So I think that that's really awesome. Um, so look for those opportunities. Um, look for those opportunities where you can find that sense of community when you need it. And more importantly, look for those opportunities when you can be that source of community for somebody else. So I'll leave you with that message tonight um, and hopefully you can you can find a way to be that person tomorrow for somebody and on an ongoing basis. But for now, that's it from Puerto Vallarta. I will keep you posted. Um, it sounds like we're gonna be in a little bit of downtime for the IVF for a minute. So 
I'll probably chat with you coming up soon a little bit more about the workplace burnout that I've been going through and trying to navigate my way through. A little bit more about PV, um, Puerto Vallarta. And uh, like I asked in the last vlog, if there's something you want to see here, let me know. Send me on an adventure and let me see what I can find out for you. Other than that, be good to one another and we will chat soon. Carpe diem, folks.